And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple. Come, one, he is one half of the development group known as Kaizen Creed. And the developers of the of the currently kickstarting Five Force Fighters, which will which will be delving into which will be delving into excruciating detail. The one and only beloved. How how you doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for the intro. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody else is doing great too. It's the closest thing I can do to a big intro without getting sued by the Buffer family. <laughs> um. So I'd I'd like to st I'd like to start at the humble beginnings and as is as is tradition around here and um with the, with that kind of, within those traditions I I want to split this in two since Five Force Fighters is it is a two D fighting game so the f so um the first half I want to get into is what got you in what got you into fighters where did you cut your teeth on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want me to answer that one first? Yeah. Okay, so what kind of got me into fighting games uh, mostly was just like my older brothers. We would always, honestly always be playing fighting games all the time. We had the Game Boy Advance. I think I was around maybe like maybe like eight around the time, but we had Tekken on there. I think Street Fighter was on there. You know, when you're playing those games on that Game Boy Advance, the graphics look extremely polished and all that stuff, and you're having a lot of fun with all the mechanics learning all the ins and outs of, you know, a fighting game, especially Tekken, which is, like, really precision-heavy when you put in inputs and stuff like that and where it connects with the other character. So that's really where it all started was, I think, for me, Tekken, um, back then uh, on the Game Boy Advance with uh, with all my family. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that which brings which brings me to um, Five Force Fighters. Um, mm -hmm. How... How did was this was this just something that you that that you that you and your brother had been ta had been taking notes and swapping ideas ideas about for a long time? No, 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 no. Actually, um, after high school um, a couple years ago, I was deciding I was doing accounting and all that, but I was always constantly coming up with ideas for video games, mostly like RPGs, action RPGs, action RPGs, stuff like that that have like strong stories mm -hmm. and my little brother we were constantly playing this fan fighting game called hyper hyper dragon ball z it's a Mugen game and I, we're playing that all the time yeah go ahead i am vi you're what you're actually one of the f you're actually one of the few people i've had i've had on who's even aware of um hyper dbz that get that gets that gets over that gets overlooked way too much um Part, I'd say I'd say part of the reason is because is because it's a Mugen game and everybody and mm -hmm. around that time we were drowning in in Mugen games that just had the idea of add all the characters doesn't matter if it makes yeah. like a fucking sense don't don't have any real design just add all the characters exactly yeah it's when I saw that for the first time I was like yo this is like one of the coolest games I've ever seen you know coolest fighting games I've ever seen mm -hmm. and. I was constantly, we were playing that, I would play as Gohan, my brother played as like Super Saiyan, Goku, Goku and all that, all, all these other characters. And then we were also playing just other fighting games like Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. um, but what got us going into the category of making one is when I saw my little brother's character in Xenoverse. He was creating a character, you know how they have that create a character option, right? Yep. So he created his own character and then he started drawing and this is really got me started like going, I was like, I saw the character and I was like, yo, bro, you want to make a fighting game? You want to make a game? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And so that was literally just the moment after I saw that picture, I was just like, yo, let's make a fighting game. And he's like, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what got us towards that trajectory. And we just started coming up with concepts. Like I would come up with a concept, like a bunch of concepts just in one day. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be like, it was supposed to be more like Smash Bros where, you know, you have like a platform fighter. Mm -hmm. with a lot of like different mechanics that had to do with teamwork like originally if you got knocked off stage or something like that your partner would be able to throw you back on stage and help you get back to the stage and stuff like that but 
when I started thinking about it, I was just like, they're Smash Bros. You can't really um, reinvent the, the the idea of like how Smash Bros. works a lot because that percentage system is like in the way. So I tried a different type of percentage system, how to increase power with attacks and all this stuff, like conceptualizing. But then I I got down to the point of maybe if I brought the 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 input system from Smash, implement it into a more traditional setting of 2D fighters that we have like Street Fighter, Bla- Blast Blue, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that, then I can create a game which could have that flexibility when it comes to com- like combos, can have that that quickness and that speed of like Dragon Ball Fighters and stuff like that and implement it into this game. And so that's where we went off of from that point on, and then that's what kind of created Five Force Fighters. Yeah. Now, when I um I went through the, I went through the demo obviously, and um, mm-hmm. I've I've seen I've seen some of the um some of the com- some of the combo clips that have been put that you've been putting up on Twitter for months before the mm-hmm. Kickstarter launched. Mm-hmm. Um, but one one as I as I was going through it and I saw and I saw I saw the uh, mechanics that you get that you guys were dealing with um. Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, I ended up getting reminded of um, a lot of the output from New Blood, even which might sound odd because they mainly do old school FPS style stuff. But the reason I say that is a lot a lot of their a lot of their stuff has these has these mixes of elements from from other games, but it's not but it's not a full it's not a full on copy pasta of them, like mm-hmm. duh. Dusk has some DNA of Quake. It's got some DNA of Blood, but I'd be hard pressed to call it a rip off of either of them. It's using them in its own in its own way. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of the vibe. Like I, I could say that I could say that this that a certain mechanic here or there might remind me of, say, Street Fighter Three or or um say or Smash or 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 the like. But it's but it's more about but it's. I can't, but I can't say that it's dire- that it's directly from one of those. And given what you mentioned about all those different ideas, was there a point in the early on where um, where you felt like you were kind you were kind of having a bit of feature creep in terms of the ideas you wanted to implement? Um, feature creep. Can you explain what that is, Loki? Um, you were ge- you were getting lo- it's where you were getting lost in the lost in the wheat. Was there moments early on where you were getting lost in the weeds about about um, ideas that you wanted to implement instead of um, having having a core that you wanted to build around? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think a lot of the time when I was first starting, like making an idea, it was because you know you're kind of limited on what you can do mm-hmm. based off of the skills that you do know at that point, and so I felt like all, I threw I threw away a lot of ideas that we had originally, like. I'm a big RPG fan, right? So mm-hmm. I was thinking about having like maybe like an item system or like a magic system within the game that the characters can use, like a magic bar or something like that. Threw that away. I threw away the um, the idea of you know platform fighting, the percentage system. Threw that away. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a game called Final Fantasy: The Cydia. It has like a, a number system too. I was thinking about yeah. doing something similar to that, but like changing it up in my own way. Threw that away. You know, there's just a lot of stuff that just I where I was just like, you know, it's better to just focus on creating a fighting game instead of and create one feature that really makes the game really unique. You know what I mean? And for for us, I felt like that was the combo system and creating the four system where it's really easy to make these flexible combos like you see on the the YouTube video or on the on the videos in my Twitter mm-hmm. or the videos in the trailer where you see it, it's really extended combos, but you think it'd be really easy to pull off because on paper the inputs are extremely easy, but it's remembering those patterns, it's remembering what move goes with which move and stuff like that. So I felt like that was what we were what we need to target at the end of the day was finding our lane. Would it be fair? Would it be fair of me to say that one of the philosophies that you have with it is, you're you're less you're less fo- you're less focused on on having people memor on having people memorize, um, precise input combinations as opposed to memorizing the right the right time and place to use them. Yeah, I think that's exactly how it is because 
you can play the game and you can figure out all the moves in the game. Just like Smash Bros, you know every move in the, in the game because there's only a few. But if you figure out when and how to use the move with other moves, it's perfect. But in other fighting games, it's just like you have to remember the inputs and you have to also remember the combos that go with them. Yeah. And inputs can be difficult for some people. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons like I'm good at Smash Bros, but I'm not really great at um, what's a fighting game. Like... I I couldn't see Guilty Gear. <laughs> actually, actually, I was gonna, I was gonna once go, go, gonna go one step further. I can't see, I can't see you lasting long in um, SNK Hell. Um, <laughs> yeah, I used to play. Uh, what's that? Samurai Showdown on SNK. That Show game's fun. Showdown, <laughs> Showdown isn't. Showdown is. I'm not gonna say. E I'm not gonna say easier when it comes to the SN. When it comes to SNK Hell, um, obviously the big, obviously the big offender will always be. Um, King of Fighters, and will always, always be Art of Fighting, the game that broke me. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But, and <laughs> I it's the, feel that. And it's the, it's the reason I can feel my blood pressure rising every time I hear the word geese. <laughs> Fuck that guy. But, OP. but, um, the re but the reason, the reason why I, the reason why I say that is a lot, is a lot of the, a lot of the precision when it comes to when it comes when it comes when it comes to mo when it comes to how when it comes to how you're doing um, special moves in that setup, and then all the and then couple that with all the other uh, mechanics in there. Although the but at, compare that with say Samurai Showdown, which um, is not is not as is not as fast as, and not as aggressive. It's ma it the leth it's mainly in the fact that you have a lot of high damage. Um, setups mm -hmm. that and it's it's not and I will I will admit that with this kind of simplicity um, one game that I one game that I had discussed a while back that was on a similar but different approach was Fantasy Strike if you're if you're familiar with that one um, oh yeah is is it that new game that kind of has like Sections or chunks of a of a hit. I mean, health bar. Yeah, that was that was Serlin's project where it, where it utilized chunks instead of a traditional health bar and ha and um, but what? But the key the key difference is, Fantasy Strike has the kind of speed that you'd see in say Street Fighter Two. Mm -hmm. Um, putting aside the fact that the whole combo system was something that was a total accident, but I'm getting ahead of myself. But the key the key difference between Fantasy Strike and Five Force Fighters in this regard is speed. It's mm -hmm. de you definitely have a much you definitely have a much fa a much faster a much combo heavy um, approach. And what I'm curious about is how, is what steps you've done what steps you've done to make sure that that speed isn't overwhelming or ha or have it that everybody's just a speed boy. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um... So yeah, we do have a lot of speed in the game. That's a big factor. Um, to kind of balance that out between characters, you know, a lot of games, what you do is, you know, increase a stat for this, increase a stat for that. But we also have these passive abilities that are in the game. And one of them that's really important, especially if you're going up against a character like Coco, who's probably going to be the fastest character in the game, mm -hmm. which you can try out in the demo, um, is learning how to use the passive abilities like critical counter um mm -hmm. especially when you're locked into a block string and then you have to just defend and hold that button if you hit the jump button while blocking you'll be able to like critical counter and knock this ca character out of their combo string or and and take the advantage so it's all about for me i think um when learning the game it's also about learning how to use your passive abilities that we uh supplied in the universal function functions and mechanics in our game. Mm -hmm. And with with that kind with that kind of thing in mind, it's in, it's interesting that you brought up you brought up the you brought up the magic um, setup that you set up that you had considered. Um, mm -hmm. Putting putting aside the fact that um, that actually was attempted in an, in another game that is got, that got overlooked over the years, that being Golden Axe: The Duel, um, but with but with the with the main cast you gave 
would it be, would it be fair to say that some of the DNA of that ma of that magic system um, was ke was kept in the form in the form of the main cast all having an associated element? Um, that I think n not necessarily. That's always kind of just been a part of the game. Like I don't know why it was the thing that we just like stuck to it was the first idea besides mugen the character that the first character that we got conceptualized mm -hmm. after him we just threw him to the side we're like okay we'll get back to you later let's make the main cast and originally we were like oh let's do some element stuff and so we jotted down like five elements right mm -hmm. and then when we were talking we we're like oh it's the game's gonna be called four four spiders right and then it, i think a day or two passed me and my little bro uh, delight we're on a walk and then we started counting again it was like there's five of them you know and so because we were dumb and didn't know how to count for some reason we missed out on one, <laughs> we missed one character so we had to change the name to five force fighters and it rolls off the tongue better in my opinion but yeah i, I think i i went off t like off subject off subject but yeah five force fighters um the magic system was just something i really wanted in the game Mm -hmm. Them having elements was more of like a became a story element that I incorporated afterwards, just off of a you know random ex like random idea that we had to just have elements as the main cast powers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but we yes, yeah, it's, it's being implemented into the story right now. About it all ties in. Oh, all right. Um, now that brings that brings me to. The to one to the one element that I'd I'd say is cert, I'd say is certainly in the crux of the game's sandbox, and that is the that is essentially the force system and how it's used. Since mm -hmm. it's um it's very at least in the, at least in this current form, it is not in the traditional trappings of of what people expect a super meter to to be when it comes to two D fighters. Um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I'd say it. It very much. It very much feels like a, like a options, like an options system, rather rather than rather rather than a um, Nova. Mm -hmm. If you if you'll for, if you'll for me if you'll forgive me for th for throwing in a bit of um, tabletop terminology with this. <laughs> um. What I mean, what I mean by that, what I mean by that is, when you look at a lot of fighting games that have some sort of super, it's a case of ho you're holding that you're holding that thing off until until you can use it for a, for a given move. Mm -hmm. Um. And with this one, with this one, would it be would it be fair would it be fair of me to say that you that that your intent is to have people constantly gaining and losing force? Oh yeah, that's exactly it. I, I, for me, when I'm playing games like that, I'm just like, man, um, I'm always holding on to the super meter, and I have to figure out the right time to use it. What I wanted was like, I want, to, I want to give a resource that was essential to performing combos in the game, so you're constantly just burning it, and if it comes down to a situation where you're, where you used it in a long combo, or you're just wasting it on other people, like on, on just like avoiding or using your passive abilities mm -hmm. then you're at a disadvantage so it just felt like a cool system where you can really exploit having so much meter or you know be really high left high and dry because you used it all mm -hmm. in that's in that same vein would would it be fair to say that um this isn't really a game that's going to encourage only going ham when you've got a full meter <clears throat> um I think you you could still probably you probably would want to still try to go ham without the meter because you have to build it up mm -hmm. with your weak attacks or your your grabs or your uh your chargeables. So definitely trying to get in there to raise your meter is important. And to be honest, the the system that we have in now is not completely finished. Mm -hmm. What we what we're presenting in the game is like, you know, the core, right? But we want to add a super force meter, you know. To also extend what we can do with the core source, the core force system. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff, a lot of things that we just like came up with. Me and my uh, younger brother uh, came up with just recently on how to even expand on the system that we currently have, yeah. and to maybe even balance it out a little bit. 
Um, now, when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to the cast, um, obvi- obviously the two obviously in the demo the two main playables were Coco and Pebbles, which is which as an aside is a very Inafune kind of kind of thing to do with that kind of name <laughs> setup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was doing when I came up with those names, to be honest. <laughs> um, I, but what I, but um, what I will, what I will say, what I will say about the about the setup between between those two is um, with Pe- with pebbles with pebbles especially, I keep I keep seeing this and I keep going. Was this designed by an Eddie main? <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying because dis- despite him despite him float despite Pebbles floating around he is I it, it that is some blatant capoeira shit. <laughs> you know we we what we did was like we cuz they're brothers but they're half brothers but we wanted to kind of like represent a little bit of like uh like Pebbles handles the kicks and then Coco kind of handles the punches. Mm-hmm. Coco Pebbles kicks a lot more, but it's more noticeable that he kicks all the time because, you know, when you see a character kicking, mm-hmm. you're just like, oh, that's cool. But you don't really see, I mean, you don't, and you don't really see that that often. But when you see Pebbles, he's actually constantly punching. And I don't know why we did it that way. It was just like a, a, des- a design choice that every move that Coco has that's a punch. Well, maybe not every move, but most most moves that is a punch for Coco is a kick for Pebbles. Um, maybe tr- probably showing that contrast between characters. Mm-hmm. Um, also, be like it, it's just like uh, I guess a cool detail that we want to add in the game as well. All right, I I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah. And what I do, what I do, what I do find, in, what I do find interesting is this when it comes, especially when it comes to a lot of the a lot of the designs. Um, Coco and Pebbles are the t- are the t- are the most um, contemporary of of the group, whereas it, whereas for the rest of the cast, it's very much on the fantastical end of things. Mm-hmm. Um, was 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 it a ca- was was that a case where you get where you guys didn't want you guys didn't want it to um, be to be all to be all one setting, or was it ju- was it just a um, co- was it just a collision of ideas? Um, it was, at first, it was, it was cause like a design process, you know, mm-hmm. at first, you know, you're always constantly changing designs. I mean, Coco, Pebbles really didn't go through a design change. He's always looked like that. Did I say Pebbles or Coco? You said, oh, well, you said Pebbles. Okay, yeah, Pebbles always looked like that. Coco went through a few design changes, but the main reason they do kind of all look different is because of like, uh, where they're from. So yeah, it was more of a design choice based off a story and like the background and the bios of the characters. So like for a poem, like I honestly, to be honest, for poem, it's just more like, I don't know why we did that. It's probably how she was raised with this character that we'll introduce later. But for Blaine, he's like, a, you know, a pharaoh. He's like lives in Egypt and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. he's pharaoh Blaine. So he's dressing all more like fancy in Egyptian attire. Mm-hmm. Strail is from Strail's from Japan, you know. Um, so he's wearing some samurai s clothes and stuff like that. But we also what we decided to do was we wanted to give them more, you know, sort of like daily clothing that we would wear mm-hmm. out here in like you know in America and stuff like that. Because that's just what we do. We just wear casual clothes sometimes. Mm-hmm. So we were we we're coming up with like designs. Foreign characters to wear just, you know, like hoodies, you know, jeans, pants, shorts, stuff like that. Because I think a lot of people were saying like designs like that were really cool too. And I agree. I like designs where they're just wearing like contemporary clothes, stuff mm-hmm. that you can vibe with. Yeah. Um, also makes co- also makes cosplaying a, a significant amount easier. <laughs> Did I say <laughs> yeah, that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> um, but when now... When it when it comes to the, as a bit of an aside, I, I will note some um some of my buddies because obviously the monk obviously monk is my moniker so when it, so a bunch of people were making uh were making jokes that Blaine is gonna be my gonna be my main at my expense because of the staff. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know you know what Polk, a poem was actually supposed to be like she was originally a dude character kind of small and a monk 
And then we just switched it up, made her really big, buff, the buffest character and the biggest character in the game. Mm -hmm. And not as much of a mu as a mug, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's just one it's just one of those it's just one of those things that's been, that's been the that's been the running gag even though um my even though my preferred element is ice so that so so that would cause a bit of a conflict to say That's the a least. big conflict. That's um, a big conflict. But when it comes to the combo system, um full force links that you have. Um mm -hmm. this this almost 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 rock paper scissors setup of of weeks grabs chargeables and for and force um mm -hmm. how um how do you make how do you given that given that each given that there's a certain list that each one will combo into um do you it how do you make how do you make sure that um that the that there isn't a false choice situation false choice situation to explain what to explain what I mean by that, it's a it's a case where there's a where there where a game it, a game gives you a lot of choices, in mm -hmm. in theor in theory, but in practice the choices are significantly are a significantly smaller pool. Mm. Um, I think, well, it it kind of goes with just how fighting games kind of like set up, you know. Mm -hmm. In in the result of like playing as a certain character, like say in like Street Fighter or something like that, mm -hmm. if you choose the move set of like Ryu, he's more of like a balanced character where you can figure out like how to how to play the game and stuff like that. Whereas if you choose like Vega, you have to figure out what type of system and what type of moves to actually use to produce the proper combos for that character and that goes back into like the full force links if you're using if you're using um, pebbles you have to realize that he can't go in like really just get up in your face the way coco can and so that means you might not be able to utilize grabs the same way as coco uses grabs and stuff like that so to prevent that instead of preventing it we're making it around the character where you have to mold towards your character and how they play mm -hmm. to achieve the full force links optimal system. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I can, I can get that. Um, now give, given, now I wanted to use that to kind of, to kind of set the stage for, to, in terms of, in terms of how, how the, how the cast utilizes this combo system in in way in ways that are unique to them, um, mm -hmm. and, I, and if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to go. I'd like to go down the list when it co when it comes to this. Starting starting with how starting with um how coke how Coco's um setup would you would utilize the utilize this combo system in in terms of what's what he's better at and what he's not and what he's not going to be good at. Mm -hmm. So for Coco, he's he's a rushdown character, so he's all up in your face, you know, heavy combos. So starting off with weeks would probably be his best option, weeks and grabs, um, and then transitioning that into some heavies. And then after that, applying force heavily into your combo while transitioning back to weeks and heavies. So it's like climbing a ladder for him, especially. Um, he can burn through a lot of force easily. And because he doesn't have any ranged attacks, he, uh, he's at a very like large disadvantage when it comes to you know spacing. If he needs to, you know, if he needs to get that space, he might not have that opportunity because he has no ranged project projectiles. Um, so he uses he really utilizes the full force link system in more of a way to approach your opponent and take them down as fast as he can. It's all about lightning. It's all about speed for Coco. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, lightning is his element. So pebbles. <laughs> pebbles. Oh, uh, pebbles is actually a really dope character, in my opinion. So we set him up in a way where his moves kind of you want to take your characters up in the air because he actually does more damage in the air. But while in the air, we changed his moves in a way so when you use heavies, he stalls in the air so he doesn't drop. But if you use his weeks, he does have he has a little bit of drop. Um, so he's affected by gravity. 
if you if you're using using him right, then you'll do a lot of damage output that a lot of people don't know about. And he's a mix up character. Mm. We don't really have we don't really have mix ups in the game because of our block button being just you know holding holding the block button. Mm. And when you switch sides, the character automatically switches. But it can he mixes up with loads and highs and stuff like that. A lot of people don't know that because he's it's it's a new game and there's a lot of depth to it that yeah. people just haven't seen yet. So he uses really like his command grab, like the one where he launches forward using force and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But his system is really heavy on applying force moves to extend combos. Um, if you can, it'd be best to just get a lot of force mm -hmm. attached to his moves early on and some of his chargeables. He's not really the best. His weak attacks aren't the greatest. Yeah. Um, Strail. Oh, Strail. Okay, so Strail is really fun to play. He's a really fun character. Uh, there's not a lot out on him, mm -hmm. but he has this, what we call, his techniques are called Hashira. It's So when we created his character, we were just making a water character, having fun, you know, character mm -hmm. with a sword. And then Demon Slayer came out. You know the anime. Oh, Demon yeah. Slayer came out. Everybody was like, oh, he's like um, Tanjiro. And then I was just like, well, we didn't get inspiration from him. But it, it's gonna keep people are gonna keep on saying it, so we might as well just you know, you know, give them a little nod mm -hmm. to the anime. So there's Hashiras in the in the anime, and they're like the pillars. Mm -hmm. And so his moves are called Hashira. So the first move he does, like we showed off in the trailer, is called like the flow pillar. And so with his techniques is like he's very he can start like extending his combos with force way easier than a lot of characters um, because of all the the motion that he has. And it, it, it combos in really easily. Mm -hmm. And he has a lot of... He can have a lot of range and dominance over a fight once he gets his combo started. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't really have... Um, he's he's a pretty slow character on the ground as well. But once you figure out his rhythm, the timing of his moves, he's a lot about timing um, with his blade strikes. We're going over a little bit of his animations because we weren't we didn't like him the best, but he's pretty, he's pretty far along right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's he's actually a really fun character to play as, if you get the chance when um, it drops. <laughs> yeah, I um, from what from from the way you from the way you de from the way you describe him, the the vibe would it be would it be fair that there's that there's a bit of um, a bit of frame trapping with him, or is that or is or am I misreading that? Oh no, you're right, you're right. There's a bit of frame trapping. Mm -hmm. It's oh. true. I'm not. I I don't want to make I don't want to make the comparison because because both because both of them are doing the samurai thing, but I kept getting reminded of Baiken. Baiken, who's that? I'm um, sorry. Baiken from Guilty Gear. Who's that? Oh. Ah oh, man, I don't I don't know if I know that guy. Girl. Girl, what? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Big L, don't let anybody hear this podcast. They're gonna be on my head. <laughs> like I, like I said, we, Forge, you're in good, you're in good hands because we do, we do not consider ourselves professionals here in the monastery. Like I said, <laughs> we're a, we're a bunch of assholes. Um, Palm, Palm, yeah. So, yeah, Palm, she she's a uh, very slow, a very slow, but on some of her moves we gave her like super armor mm -hmm. because of her slowness because obviously going up against a character like coco probably would be not the best experience you know so she's giving some super armor to buff her attacks when going in against an opponent she has this really she's earth based so we had to give her an attack that covers the full ground you know mm -hmm. just to you know a little cool stuff right there but yeah she is one of the slower characters. She's not a um, what do you, what would you call it? a grappler based off of what everybody thinks and how she looks. That's saved up for another character. But yeah, she she's a heavy hitter. Definitely somebody you want to figure out the timing for as well. Just like Strail, because of like her moves keeping you in the air, the slowdown of like how you when you fly into the air and when you hit the ground is something that you have to time. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you land solidly to continue your combo. So her full force swings also really 
it's heavily on heavies or game and converting that to like back to lights and then probably ending the combo with uh force moves as well so so essentially a reversion of the of the tip of the typical setup when it comes to combos where you're trying mm -hmm. trying to start with weeks but sh but in her case she's trying to start with heavies and using weeks to extend yeah which exactly um is a, is a bit of is a bit of pitching with your left hand kind of thing but but i i can i can go with it um i mean yeah i mean it's like also also a lot of this stuff is like stuff we're still you know conceptualizing as we go along um the reason we're thinking about doing her like that is because it's just like you don't want every character to play the same mm -hmm. but at the same time you want to make it still familiar enough for people to pick her up so yeah, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, um, that's not to, that's not to say that concept is a, is a bad thing. It's just a it's just a different thing. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, then is um Blaine. Oh, Blaine, Blaine is actually a very, 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 very strong character. Um, he may we might have to tone it down just from based off what we have currently, but he might be able to pull off a TOD. So he's 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 a very powerful character because he's one of the only characters that can um, instant cancel into um, tr another instant cancel, which is kind of crazy. So what we what are instant cancels or instant ca cancels are um, moves in our game where you because our chargeables can be charged to level two, mm -hmm. and so in our game we decided that if you wanted to burn some more meter to instantly get a chargeable out you can do that and so he's able to burn meter twice with different chargeables to extend his combo but because of the moves are extremely strong it makes him extremely strong so he is pretty op at this point he's definitely in the works something that we're not solid on um based on how you just based on how you describe it the only the only the only the only the only advice I, I the only vibe I can I can give when it comes to that is that he if you'll pardon the pun he he um because of because of that kind of setup he can bur that can burn through force quickly uh, <laughs> yeah yeah I, I real I realize the irony of me saying that with the with the with the fire guy but the the point the point is is that um I pro I'd probably have it that that's that that's something that can be very powerful, but you can't, you can't completely re you can't completely rely on it beyond sh beyond bursts. Yeah, exactly. It's something you would actually have to, to plan out and be tactical with, because if you burn all burn through all your meter, then it's done so for your mm -hmm. combos, and all your defense. Yeah. Um. Although when when you meant when you mentioned him when you mentioned Blaine being a being a being a cancel specialist in that regard the the character who I, the character who I kept thinking of as a, as a um as a comparative is Crimson Viper. I can I can definitely see that because he does utilize a lot of cancel abilities that some characters don't like will not even have a feature to. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely pretty unique to Blaine, which is sick. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas um, somebody like Pebbles, if I if I were to compare him to anyone, I'd, I'd say a, I'd say Furion in Dissidia, but inverted. <laughs> yeah, I, I I definitely see that as well. Dissidia was such a a unique fighting game, just in general, like what they pulled off. Um, I wanted to take more idea, like like references from that game because of how how unique their approach was did you ever play nt is that the new one the one that came out on ps5 or ps4 yeah in the arcade no i never got the chance to i played it on i played the city on psp um so i'm guess i'm guessing you played both the original and duodecim in yeah that, in that sense um NT NT is good, but it is but it is a significantly different experience. Um, All right, yeah, go ahead. Large, largely because it largely because its root instead of being one on one, it's rooted in th in three on three fights, 
and mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of the whole the whole thing of racing for the EX crystal isn't really a thing. In fact, EX finishers are out. Um, what? There, there are they've been replaced with EX skills, but mm-hmm. the, but um, I actually don't I actually don't mind the the lack of that kind of EX finisher because, um. In my experience, a lot of a lot of fights in the city ended up being a race to see who could fill up their 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 meters, get get the mode change, and then and then try and then try and win in one shot. Yeah. Um, but because of the fact that that that's not re- that that isn't as much of a thing, it it means that the rest of the move set has a has a better chance in help. There were certain char- there were certain characters were get were trying to get into EX mode was their entire point. Looking at you, Gabranth. Yeah. Um. But, and of course, and there, was, and of course, there was also the fact that way too much of it was in the air, which is why some of like Furion was not picked all that much. Mm-hmm. Um. Whereas in in um NT, he's a lot more viable because there's a lot more control over air game. You act. You actually. You're not going to be. Da- you're not going to be dashing in perpetuity. But, mm-hmm. um, in the in that kind of comparative thing, when it comes to Coco, would it be fair to say that he that he's in that he's in some way intended to be the Ryu of this setup, the um that kind of all that kind of all rounder? No, nah. uh, he's not. Um, C- Coco isn't the all-arounder like you would expect because, you know, usually the face of the the game is usually that, is that person. Yeah. But I wanted it to be, like, none of the characters were an all-arounder just to show different aspects of how you can play the game and mm-hmm. stuff like that. The character, just a little spoiler, the character Mugen is planned to be, like, an all-around, like an all-arounder. Uh, the first character that we made as a group Mm -hmm. because we were, we were thinking like, you know, he has, he has that, um, Ryu look, he has that Dragon Ball Z look, Goku Gi on, you know, and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, you know, that standard character that you probably see in a lot of fighting games. So we wanted to keep that tradition going and have him be like that all arounder when we get him in the game. So if you want a character who's easier to pick up or something like that, you have Mugen to teach you. Something else, something else that I've that I've seen with a, with a lot of a lot of the fights within it is a very a very heavy emphasis on get on getting on getting in close and not a whole lot of proje- uh, a lot of a lot of projectile use. So would it be fair of me to say that um, you don't that that um, the sh- the Shoto archetype isn't going to be as represented as it is in other fighters? Yeah, that's pretty fair. That's a pretty fair statement to say. Um, there aren't that many um, projectiles in the game because of how fast-paced it is, mm-hmm. and you can see how projectiles, you know, flooding the screen could probably slow down the gameplay in a way and be frustrating. But we do have a character who's dedicated to projectiles coming along, which. It's going to be fun to see how that works out with the whole entire setup of our game. So it's something that we have to even just test out to see how it works and how it feels. But yeah, what you said was probably on point. Yeah. I don't. I could... And that's definitely something I, I don't mind simply because I understand I understand why some people hate Shotos. I am ambi- I'm ambivalent towards it because because everything everything has a, in a in a properly designed game um, there's always a way, there's always a way around the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, it's when it's when it's when the pro- it's when a problem ends up coming up too easily, or the or the way around it is too obtuse that you have well issues. But and that and I get I get the feeling that 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 um that's the reason why you why you guys have put so much emphasis into some of the defensive tactics that can be used, whether it be whether it be dot dashes. Why did I say dashes? Um, <laughs> counters, counters, and the like. Oh yeah, definitely. That's one hundred percent one of the reasons we put a lot of defensive mechanics in the game, and there's a huge emphasis on them as well. Mm-hmm. When you're playing Five Force Fighters, it's there's like a high chance that there's, you know, 
infinites in the game. I mean, we've removed a lot of them, some that have come up during our demo tests and stuff like that. But even still, there are probably still more that we don't know about and people haven't found. So that's why we implemented a lot of defensive systems and stuff like that to also just eradicate those those um, opportunities to do something like that. Um, but the other thing is like we we're planning on adding some other stuff to increase offense as well. It's something that we're still thinking about. Like I, I shouldn't go into details because it might change. And so that's something I'm just gonna keep on the on the low, just between myself and my brother at this point. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's there's still offensive stuff that we want to add into the game that still balances out those defensive system and systems and still keeps our offense going. So the game still has its own identity and fun from its original long combos and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the the big re- the big reason that 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 I bring something like that up is I'm a big fan I'm a big fan of reversals this idea this idea that just because you just because you've got a advantage doesn't mean that you can take it easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, it, of course, when whenever I bring up reversals, everyone always brings up that moment with, with at Evo. You know, the <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a little one. bit too, it's a little bit too easy to bring that up when when everybody's gonna think of that to the point where mm-hmm. it's the world's worst Warshack test. <laughs> um, but that but going but that brings me to. Um. To sto- to story, oddly enough. Now, mm-hmm. while th- while this isn't as true as it w- as it was just a decade ago, there is st- there is still the mi- there is still the mindset that d- that story I- that story isn't important in a fighting game. Um. And gr- granted, in the granted in the last few in the last few years, especially that's ki- that's kind of been dialed back, and especially I'd say especially. Due to the branching stuff that Arc System Works does in a lot of their stuff, but when it came, but when it came to when it came to your guys' attempt at do at doing story, did you did Hello? you in, huh? Hello, oh, I cut out for a little bit. Uh, um, yeah, I was I was saying I had get I had given a bit of preamble when it comes to the when it comes to the story debate with fighting games. Um, mm-hmm. Even though that narrative is kind of, is starting to recede a little bit, but um, when it comes, but what what are you are you planning when it comes to doing story with Five Force Fighters? Are you are you intending it to be relatively straightforward? Or are you going to be do, are you going to be doing branches? What what do you have planned when it comes to that angle? Uh, when it comes to story mode, I plan. I wanted to. I definitely wanted to. Feel I've, I definitely want the people who are reading or participating in the story to feel something mm-hmm. with the characters, you know, knowing their backstories, knowing what they've gone through, um, things like th- of that nature. Mm-hmm. It's still something that we're we're still thinking about. I mean, I have the you know the grounds for the story, but the way I want to present it in game is something that you know is still up in up in the air because of you know development and the kickstarter and stuff like that mm-hmm. having enough having enough of a budget to actually make what you want possible so i do want the reason i do want a story is because i know that investing um time into characters that you enjoy is also a part of the gameplay experience mm-hmm. so i do really want it to be an enjoyable experience along with the the mechanics of the game i want the story to also be something that people vibe with and you know enjoy thoroughly yeah and uh, that's cer- that's certainly something that I can get behind um the main reason that I, that I asked is I was I was curious if um if the if the idea of um vari- variations in f- variations in fights to reflect story is something that had been considered since that's w- that's one angle that some ga- that some games will do oh so like like if you use Coco and you go up against like Blaine or something like that, and then you go and then Blaine goes up against somebody else, you know, and then has a different outcome of that fight or something like that. Um, sometimes sometimes this can be as this can be as simple as as um bu- as bumping up the AI difficulty level, giving giving someone an advantage an advantage with fo- an advantage with force, um, 
a shorter a shorter time a shorter um round timer um those are minor those are minor things that can that can that can bring that can bring it into effect or if, so, if somebody ha if somebody has to fight when they're already exhausted them starting out with only half health or something like that oh so you're saying like during the story these things are happening and then it affects the characters during yeah. your actual fight yeah oh yeah 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 i mean that's definitely a possibility and i feel like that actually makes you feel like you're a part of the the story because of what happened and what you're reading so yeah. that's definitely something the i big, take into account yeah the big reason that the big reason that i focus on that is i think i think the reason story is dismissed in in fighting games is a lot of a lot of times it's a series of it's a series of standard fights mm -hmm. with without without much in the way of variation aside from a difficult aside from maybe a difficulty level you pick at the outset. Yeah, I agree with that. And kind of just yeah, go ahead. While while I can while I can understand that because because of the arcade roots, um, this is this isn't going up in arcades. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't. It's not going up in arcades. It's gonna be on PC and maybe consoles. So yeah. Um, I, I I mean it's just like you, you got to figure out what you can do to make the the story mode unique in its own way. I've thought of a cool I, I've thought of a few concepts uh, to make it possible and feasible for us because we are a small team, group of three, mm -hmm. uh, myself, my younger brother, and my composer slash writer friend Bird Boy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just like if we're able to do it, then we're gonna do it. Um, but yeah, at, at this moment, it's just more of deciding where we're taking things and. You know, solving each problem day by day, hour by hour, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Speaking of speaking of the music, it um it took, I I remember hear I remember hearing the tracks that you have that you have, and I kept I kept trying to think about what what I was getting reminded of, um, mm -hmm. and and that and like a like a bolt of lightning, it it finally hit me. Um, I know I know a lot of people will I know a lot of people will will probably bring up. Um, skull gr skull girls or persona to you, but that but that's not what that's not what or who I was reminded of. Mm -hmm. I was reminded of the late New um, Yes, sir. Yes, on the on the note. Let me talk about that. So, uh, I've watched like what was it called Samurai Shampoo since I was little, mm -hmm. and I remember as a little kid, um, just being in my room. And then finding out that he passed away, like while watching the series, and that like devastated me for long because I loved his music mm -hmm. because of that show. And so, I mean, he's always his music has always been like a guiding force of like, oh, this is good music mm -hmm. and stuff like that because of his style. So I definitely, when talking to my friend, I was like, yeah, we have to incorporate his style into the game for sure. But then after a while, because of new job is his style, just in general of being you know more chill, lo fi -y type beat. That it wouldn't 100%, you know, conform into a fighting game scene. Let's and, not, you know, let's not forget how MVC2 has got has gotten dragged over using over using jazz music for its soundtrack. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just like you got to figure out that balance. So we decided to, if you if you listen to the trailer too, um, uh, I'm a big fan of just all types of hip hop and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. there's a drill, there's drill beats in there. There's you know classical hip hop. There's some jazz roots in here too. So yeah. we're definitely trying to come up with a, a varied um, soundtrack that revolves around you know hip hop as its core, but then taking the branches and letting us like letting us run with it because we do have options to make a soundtrack that still has its core, but also can take liberties with how we want it to to sound and represent our game. At the risk of me making a bit of a musical deep cut, I, I gotta ask, are you familiar at all with Psyche Origami? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> are, are they good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I, I bring that up because when you mentioned Samurai Shampoo, it's, it still, it still wilds me out that they meant that, um, when that was, when that was running on Adult Swim, they met, they contacted Psyche Origami to do a, to do a 30 second beat for them, and, Mm -hmm. Um, when it came when it came to when it came to a, when it came to Adult Swim during that during that time and even late even later on, 
a lot of the bumps that they that they did were from a lot of indep a lot of independent groups in the Atlanta area. Um, Psyche Origami is is one of those cases. I I still have I still have my copy of um the st of the standard, but mm. they, but they're they're kind of in that same vein of 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 mixing early hip hop with uh, with el with elements of j with elements of jazz. Yeah. So when you brought when you brought that kind of thing up, they Im they immediately came to mind. You gotta send me some of your favorite songs right uh, after this, for well, sure. I can I can cert I can certainly do I can certainly do that. Um. I because despite despite where I come from, I'm no I'm no stranger when it comes to hip hop, and <laughs> I and I and much like how I'm the digging in the trenches guy when it comes to gaming, it's the same thing when it comes to music. <laughs> yeah. um, if somebody if somebody were to look through my playlist they'd be like what who the fuck are these people <laughs> no that's cool he kind of reminds me of my big brother he's actually the reason like i like got into new jobs and stuff like that because he's just all up in the trenches when it comes to music as well mm -hmm. you know a lot of my family's like big inspiration just yeah. for creativity in general i i can i can certainly get that now i do want i do want to congratulate you on get on um getting getting dangerously close to thir to 30,000 at the at the time of this uh recording um now af after after all the paperwork is is said and done with the kickstarter um when do you when do you are the ne are the next plans after that to do a up to do an updated version of the de of the demo uh I was thinking about that. That's been an idea that's been rolling around in my mind. Mm -hmm. But because, because of some of the tiers in our Kickstarter, like, you know, an updated, like, getting future demos or betas of the game for people that donated, I, I think that would be, you know, a little bit of a slap to the face of those people that actually donated that amount mm -hmm. and just, you know, constantly updating for uh, people that didn't. So there might be one because there was a little bit of trouble with the like the demo for some people early on, and I do wanted. Uh, I mean, I just we recently just got full controller support in the game, so that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And I did want to give people a chance to try that out with other controllers and not having any type of hassle to play with other people. So that'd be cool for them to do that. So I I think after the Kickstarter ends, I might extend the demo being out for maybe a week or two. Mm -hmm. Just so people can get their hands on it and try it without any issues with their controllers. I I can get I can get behind that, but and I do and I will I will of course be keeping a very close eye on how how the whole how the whole thing develops. But mm -hmm. with all of that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come to come all the way up to the temple and enjoy the particular bits of madness that um go down around here. Um, and honestly, thank you for having me. You're really like knowledgeable when it comes to just pr a lot of stuff. <laughs> like uh, I was, the references that you pull out are just insane. I'm just like, what? How do you know this? <laughs> so it's really, it's been a cool experience being on here. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, whether whether it's to whether it's to go further into Five Forces development or just to shit post why any why anyone playing Pikachu or or Meta or Meta Knight and Smash um. Des deserves to be flogged. <laughs> um, the door, the door is always open. As we often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>